everyone and welcome back. The goal of today's class is to show that the fundamental group of the circle is non-trivial. We'll show that this fundamental group is isomorphic to the integers. And you might be able to guess intuitively what these integers correspond to. They correspond to going around the loop like three will be going around the loop three times counterclockwise. Negative three is going around the loop of the circle three times clockwise. So this is a surprisingly difficult fact to prove. In fact, it's one of the only groups that we will show explicitly uh, is equal to a fundamental group. But it does have lots and lots of cool payoffs. In fact, uh, one of them is the fundamental theorem of algebra. And that is a testament to the power of algebraic topology. It proves theorems in wide ranges of fields, including things like complex polynomials. So in order to prove this uh, isomorphism, what we'll do is introduce the notion of a covering space. So a covering space is sort of like a unraveling of your space. What happens is you have your, your space sort of on the, the bottom here and projecting down to your space is what's what looks like a stack of pancakes. It's a bunch of local pieces which look like your space downstairs. And what happens is loops in your base space get lifted up to paths in a covering space and paths happen to be easier to deal with than loops. So our strategy will be to take the circle, find a covering space, lift the loops to paths, and analyze those paths. So let's get to it. So like I mentioned, the goal of the class is to show the following theorem. The fundamental group of the circle is isomorphic to Z. With the isomorphism given by an integer n is sent to the loop cosine of 2 pi n times s sine of 2 pi n times s where s goes between 0 and 1. Again, this is just a loop that runs n times around counterclockwise. So, uh, you know, for example, let me just draw this in. I think, I think you get it, but 2 will be sent to the loop that runs around once like this, runs around again, comes back to the base point. So to do this, we are going to lift loops to paths in R. And what do I mean by this? Let me draw you a picture. So consider R inside of R3 by uh, S goes to uh, cosine of 2 pi S sine of 2 pi S and then S. So this is the normal helical picture of R in R3. So here is that helix. And now also sitting inside of R3 is the circle. So also in R3 is S1 given by uh, cosine of 2 pi s, sine of 2 pi s, 
0. And let's just restrict s to 0 to 1. So inside of here is s1 sitting right under uh, this copy of r inside of r3. Now, we get a map, which I'll call p, from r to s1 by projecting onto the first two factors. So every p just takes all of that vertical helix and collapses it down. And you can check that this map has the right target uh, by looking at the uh, previous definitions. So here's something to notice. That the inverse image of an open interval, theta 1 to theta 2, is a disjoint union of open intervals. So here, for example, is theta 1. Here is theta 2. And what's all of the stuff that projects down onto here? Well, it's, it's that, it's that, it's that, and there. And similarly, all of this blue stuff is projected onto by the blue stuff above. This is the prototypical example of what is called a covering space. Each open set down in S1 has a bunch of open sets corresponding to it in R, which project down onto it homeomorphically. So let's introduce our formal definition of covering spaces, keeping that example in mind. Here's the definition. Given a space X, a covering space of X, usually called X twiddle, is, well, a space X twiddle together with a map. P from X twiddle to X, you could think of P as standing for projection, such that for every point, little x and x, there is an open set U containing x. So that P inverse of U is a disjoint union of open sets, which we'll call UI twiddle, each of which projects onto U homeomorphically via P. That is, P restricted to UI twiddle, this goes between UI twiddle and U, is a homeomorphism. So each set u each set u 
here is called evenly covered. So X is broken up into all of these sets U and each one of them is projected onto homeomorphically by P. So the, the picture again is you have U downstairs and X. And then this will be like U1 twiddle, U2 twiddle, and P maps all of these down there via homeomorphism. Okay, so why covering spaces are important is because they allow you to lift maps into the base space. So X here is called the base space. And let me just define precisely what I mean by that. Let F from A to X be a map. A map F twiddle from A to X twiddle for some covering space given by P X twiddle to X is called a lift of F if well, I'll just draw the diagram and then write it in so here's A A is mapping to X by F I also have X twiddle covering X by P and essentially I want this diagram to commute so that is if I do F twiddle and then I do P that's the same thing as doing F. So essentially it lets me filter the map F. First I can go up to X twiddle. Maybe I can do some magic up in X twiddle first before shooting back down to X. Okay, so uh, covering spaces satisfy what's called the homotopy lifting property. So here is the hardest proposition of today's class. It's going to take some real work, but afterwards, everything else is a pleasant stroll in the park. So let X be a topological space. And let P from X twiddle to X be a covering space. So now I'm going to take a homotopy in X. So let capital F from Y cross I into X be a map. Again, think of this as a homotopy of Y inside of X. And let F twiddle from Y cross zero into X twiddle be a lift of F restricted to Y cross zero. So I have a lift on the bottom part of the interval. A natural question is, does this extend to a lift of the whole thing? And I claim that it does. So then there exists a unique map F twiddle from Y cross I to X twiddle lifting F and also restricting to the given lift on Y cross zero. Okay, 
Before we get into the proof, let me just give you the idea of what we're going to do. Here's the proof idea. So let's look at our setup again. I'm going to represent y cross i by this box here. So y cross 0 is on the bottom. And up here is y cross 1. So what I have is a map of this whole space into x. And I also have x twiddle up here covering x. And what I'm given to start with is a lift from y cross 0 to x twiddle. So this is given. And what we're going to do is pick a point, why not? We're going to map a small neighborhood of why not into x. Now remember the property of covering spaces. If the open set is sort of small enough, it, it's going to land in a evenly covered neighborhood U. So we're going to hopefully map this into an evenly covered neighborhood. Now what does it mean to be evenly covered? It means that there is a homeomorphic copy of U sitting upstairs. In particular, this thing is bijective. So it makes sense to look at P inverse of U restricted to some copy of UI. And I'm going to define my lift on this little neighborhood by shoot over into U and shoot up via P, which, which makes sense on these small neighborhoods. And then we're going to have to have patch everything together and that's also going to be a little difficult, but let's get to it. So let y not be a point in y. We'll first construct a lift on n cross i for some neighborhood n containing y not. So since f from y cross i into x is continuous and y cross i has the product topology So remember, a basis for this product topology is open set in Y and open set in I. So if I essentially just intersect the inverse image of an evenly covered neighborhood with a basis element, I get the following, which is um, each point of Y0 cross I has a neighborhood, which I'll call NT cross AT BT, so that when I map this over with F, F of NT cross AT BT, it's evenly covered. So here's the next thing. Uh, I'll keep track of this in a picture. What we have so far is here's why not, and we have a lot and a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of open sets tiling this 
strip here. Now, the next thing we want to do is note that the interval is compact. This is a consequence of the heine borel theorem. Now, since I is compact, a finite number of such sets covers y0 cross i. So the next thing we do is just pare down the number of sets we have here. Maybe there's like a fat set here and a skinny set here another fat set here. The point is that y0 cross i is still covered by all of these and there's finitely many of them. So moreover, intersecting all of the nt remaining gives a single neighborhood of y, which we call n. So the next thing I do is just take essentially the skinniest rectangle here and use that to cover y. These should intersect a little bit. Oops, and they should all be the same width. So this is n cross ti ti plus 1. So, yeah. Now, we have a neighborhood or neighborhoods n cross uh, t0, t1, well, t0 is equal to 0, union n cross t1, t2, union all the way up to n cross t m minus 1, tm with t0 is equal to 0, tm is equal to 1, and all these covering y0 cross i, and evenly covered. So now what we're going to do is construct the lift on each such set. We construct the lift on n cross. First, let's start with 0 to t1. OK, so recall that f of n cross 0 to t1 is evenly covered. And so we can declare f twiddle of n cross ti, so 0 to ti, to be p inverse of f of n cross 0 to ti. But there's a slight problem, which is that I need to pick which component this goes in. Remember, so I have all these pancakes up here. Which one does it go in? Now, since f of n cross 0 is given, f, f twiddle of n cross 0 is given. Remember, we start with a lift on the 0 part of y cross i. 
we have a preferred UI twiddle. So in particular, n cross 0 will live in one of these pancakes. And now I can honestly, unambiguously tell you what f twiddle of n cross 0 ti is. So define f twiddle of n cross 0 to ti to be p inverse restricted to ui twiddle of f of n cross 0 to ti, where ui twiddle is the component containing the lift, the given lift of n cross 0. Great. So uh, let me just draw this up here. What we now have is a lift constructed on this red part. And from here on out, it's just induction. So we may proceed inductively. So now we have an honest preferred component for say this blue line that's in both uh, n cross 0 to t1 and also n cross t1 to t2. And I'll, I'll leave it at that. So we may proceed in inductively to construct the lift. on all of n cross i. Great. So we've built a lift on a point on the neighborhood of a point. There's another part of this theorem which says that this needs to be a unique lift. So here's what we'll do. We're going to take a detour, but this will become relevant soon. So we will prove that the lift is unique in the case that y is a point. So what we're doing here is lifting a interval. So let f from, okay, I could write y not cross i, but that's just homeomorphic to i. So f from i to x be a map. And suppose f twiddle and f twiddle prime are two lifts which agree on the zero portion. So which agree on uh, zero. So as before, partition I into evenly covered neighborhoods. So this looks like 0 to t1, t1 to t2, all the way up to t m minus 1 to tm. And what I'm going to show you is that these lifts agree on each such neighborhood. So since 0 to t1, 
This thing is path connected. So is the lift. The image of a connected space is connected. And therefore, so is the other lift. Okay, now remember that these are evenly covered neighborhoods. Since zero to T one evenly covered, it lands in a set U in X covered by UI twiddle in X twiddle. So here's the picture. I have an interval it's mapping into X. This lives in an evenly covered neighborhood, U. And above it are a bunch of sets mapping homeomorphically onto there. Now, since F twiddle of zero is equal to f twiddle prime of zero. The image of zero to ti must land in the same ui twiddle. So, you know, this is f zero twiddle. Uh, but this must also be f twiddle prime of zero. And since these spaces are mapping down homeomorphically and they map to the same thing, they must actually agree upstairs. So since P is a homeo on U I twiddle, the lifts must completely agree. Again, they map down to the same thing, and so they need to be the same thing upstairs. So I'll represent that in purple. And we just proceed from here inductively. We're almost at the finish line. So what have we done so far? We've constructed the lift on neighborhoods of a point, and we've shown that it's unique whenever you restrict to a point. If you think about it, that's all we need. So since we have constructed F twiddle on a neighborhood of each point y in big Y and we have shown the restriction to each line is unique we can patch together the constructed lifts uniquely to get the desired lift. I'm going to draw a picture of this in a second. F twiddle from Y cross I into X twiddle. Just a, a pictorial summary. So you give me a map 
of y cross i into x, I tile it first like this. I showed you how to construct that lift. And then I do this for all of the points. Okay. Uh, let's make these a little bigger. And now you might ask, well, can I actually patch these together? And the answer is yes, because when I look at any line like this, there's only a unique way to lift it. And so they must have actually agreed. So that's the hard part of today's class. We have two more technical corollaries and then the payoff. Here's corollary one, which we're not going to prove because we, we basically already did. So for each path, F from I to X, starting at a point X naught in X, and each lift of X naught, X naught twiddle, in the image, inverse image of X naught, there is a unique lift. F twiddle from I to X twiddle starting at X naught twiddle. Essentially what we did before in proving the uniqueness of lifted paths does this. All I'm, all, the only extra thing I'm saying is you can start at any point in the inverse image of X naught, which is easy to see. Here's another corollary, a little bit more involved, but this is the last technical thing we'll do. So let's let P from X twiddle to X be a covering space. And let FT from I to X be a homotopy of paths. Let's make these paths start at X naught. Now also let X naught twiddle just be a particular lift of X naught. So it's in the inverse image of this covering map. So what's the setup? I have a homotopy downstairs and a lift of like a base point. And the conclusion is I get a lift of the homotopy. There is a unique lifted homotopy. FT twiddle from I to X twiddle of paths starting at X naught twiddle. Okay, let's prove this as well. It's mostly just a, a quick corollary of, of our hard proposition of the day. So as usual, I'm going to take my homotopy and turn it into a map of I cross I. So let capital F from I cross I to X be given by F of S T is little F T of S. Now by corollary one, the thing that lets me uh, lift paths, we get a unique lift of f of i cross 0. This is the image of a path. And so we've been given the starting point. So this thing lifts uniquely by the previous corollary. Now, by our previous proposition,
we get a unique lift. We now have a start at the f of i cross 0 lift. So we get a unique lift. f twiddle from i cross i into x twiddle. Now I just need to make sure that this lift is a homotopy of paths. Remember, in a homotopy of paths, the endpoints are not allowed to change. So I need to make sure of that. Uh, so since, oops, f t of zero, this is f of zero t, is always equal to x naught, regardless of t. And f t of 1, this is f of 1 t, is always equal to x1. Well, I need to lift these paths, and the lift is unique. Here's a lift of a constant path, a constant path. And so, uh, f twiddle of 0 cross i and f twiddle of 1 cross i are stationary. So constant. So indeed, I get a unique lifted homotopy f t twiddle of s given by f twiddle of s t. All right, now let's take a breath. We are now ready to give our first non-trivial example of a fundamental group. So recall, that uh, p from r to s1 given by s goes to cosine of 2 pi s sine of 2 pi s is a covering map. Also, just some notation. Let omega n be the loop uh, given by cosine of 2 pi n s sine of 2 pi n s for s between 0 and 1. So this is just the thing that wraps around the circle n times. OK, here's our theorem. Pi 1 of s1 is isomorphic to z. And let's prove it. So let f from i to s1 be a loop. Let's just say it's based at 1, 0. So by corollary 1, the thing that lets me lift paths, there is a unique lift of f starting at 0. Now, since the inverse image of 1, 0 is equal to the integers, so let me just draw this out real quick. Here's the circle in the top right, and Uh, here is that helical covering. The inverse image here, you can just check straight from the formula. 
like this here will be one, two, three. And if I go downwards with the spiral, this, for example, will be like negative one. So the, the path needs to end at an inverse, the, the lifted path needs to lift to something, uh, the end point of the lifted path needs to end at something that projects down to one zero. The things that project down to one zero are exactly the integers. So uh, f twiddle of one is an integer. n. So another path which starts and starts at zero and ends at n is the lift of this omega n. So this path just looks like here's the helix. Here's, for example, two. And omega one is just this path here. Oh, sorry, this is omega two, twiddle. You can see that that projects down to the loop that runs around twice. It runs around the helix twice, so it'll run around the circle twice. Now, uh, there's a homotopy in R between these lifted paths. Between F twiddle and WM twiddle given, well, this interval is, or the subinterval part is uh, convex, and so I could just take sort of the linear homotopy. It's 1 minus t of F twiddle plus t of WN twiddle. So composing this homotopy with the covering map, so composing F T twiddle, that's what I'll call that homotopy, with P gives a homotopy from F, my original loop, to omega n. Great. So I've shown that every loop is homotopic to one that runs around the circle n times. The next thing to show is that the, the loop that runs around n times is not homotopic to the loop that runs around m times. So let's just prove this by contradiction. Suppose that uh, f was homotopic to wn and f was homotopic to wm. Now let ft be a homotopy between them. By corollary 2, it, I'm allowed to lift homotopies to covering spaces. So there exists a lifted homotopy ft twiddle from omega n twiddle to omega m twiddle but what is ft twiddle it's a homotopy of paths so ft twiddle is a homotopy of paths And one of the rules of a homotopy of paths is that the endpoints are fixed throughout the entire homotopy. So the endpoints are fixed. Uh, 
Uh, in particular, uh, I have n, which is f zero twiddle of one is equal to f one twiddle of one, and this is m. So in in particular, n is equal to m. So no two of omega n and omega m are homotopic. Again, to summarize, every loop is homotopic to omega n, and that n, the integer, determines the homotopy class. And there we have it. So the fundamental group of S1 is isomorphic to Z. So that's going to do it for this class. Next time, we will see all of the many things that follow from this theorem. There's a huge list of corollaries that just follow from the fundamental group of S1. Like I mentioned, there's the fundamental group of algebra, fundamental theorem of algebra, and there is also something called the Brouwer fixed point theorem. So next class is the payoff. Thanks, and I will see you again next time.